Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to review the newest products that have come out at Fenty. So I have the highlight trio, the eyeshadow palette, the new eyeliner color, and the new lip glosses. So if you want to see my thoughts on all of these, then just keep watching. I've gotten quite a few DMs in my inbox of you guys asking when I was going to review these. So you wanted to know my thoughts, so it's finally here. I wanna say a huge, huge, huge thank you to my friend Tiffany. She actually runs Fenty's TikTok and she was nice enough to send these my way. But anyways, thank you so much, Tiffany, for even thinking of me. So extremely helpful. Really excited to dive in on these products. This is, for the most part, not a first impressions. I've used all of the products except for the eyeshadow palette. I haven't gotten to use that yet so we're gonna dive into that one for first impressions but let's go over the items that are in this collection I do believe this is their holiday collection so of course the most popular items are gonna be the eyeshadow palette and the highlight palette when I first saw their promo pics I thought it was one palette both a face and eye palette because Fenty is continuing on with that snap feature where you literally just snap them on and you have both palettes connected like this. I saw online if you guys have the snap eyeshadow palettes, the ones that are six pans, you can actually snap both of those six pans on the back so you have even more eyeshadows. I have not tried Fenty's eyeshadows before. I was never really into those little snap palettes. So this is the first eyeshadow palette that actually caught my eye. So like I said, we have the Bomb Posse Mega Mix and Match eyeshadow palette. And then the highlight palette is called the Diamond Bomb Triple Dream all over diamond veil palette that's quite wordy I also got the new fly liner longwear liquid liner in big truffle and then I got all three of the gloss bomb heat universal lip luminizer and plumper so we're gonna go over all of those today we are gonna start off by going into the highlight palette so as far as the packaging it has this kind of mirrored front it does feel like plastic and on the back you'll see it has the configuration to snap the palette in. It has the name of the three shades. This palette is made in the USA and it has a 12 month shelf life. You open it up, you do have a nice mirror and then you are going to reveal the highlights right here. Now when I opened this, my first impression was Ooh, those are a little bit dark. Me being a lighter skin tone, these don't necessarily look like they'll work for me with the exception of the rose. However, this formula isn't made necessarily for just the cheeks. So this is going to be $42. This is limited edition and this formula has already existed in the Fenty line. They're the Diamond Bomb powders. So if you aren't familiar, it's almost like a silky putty. When you press it, it squishes in. It's really not too powdery and you don't get too much pigmentation from this. I do have experience with this formula before. I actually decluttered it. So it's not because it's a bad formula. I decluttered it because I never used the formula. So if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would not have picked this up. If you have or had the Diamond Bomb formula and found that you didn't use it, this is not going to be the product for you. We do have, I believe these are three brand new shades. I don't believe that they have come out with these shades before. So this highlight palette lets you indulge in three of our reimagined nude shades, Fenty Glow, Fussy, and Hot Chocolate. And you're going to hear me say those names a lot because that is what this whole collection is based off of. The Fenty Glow, the Fussy, and the Hot Chocolate lip glosses and the eyeshadows are also based around these three nude shades that Fenty has developed and has become very well known. So in the highlight palette you have the fussy highlight, the Fenty Glow highlight which is the OG lip gloss color and hot chocolate. So they describe these as a unique jelly-like powder that's bouncy, cool to the touch, and melts into the skin. It's not necessarily jelly-like. When I think of jelly, I think of extra squishy, very moist. This is not like that. It feels a little bit more silky as opposed to dry. These are basically sparkly shades that can be used for face, eyes, and body. So I'm just gonna show you a quick demo of how I would apply these products. For me as a highlight, I will demonstrate it for you guys, but I like to use this on my chest. So I'm gonna use some of Fenty Glow. I'm using a synthetic brush and I'm gonna put this all over my chest and it's just gonna give you that sparkle. So if you go out at night or you go to any occasion where you like to have sparkle 
speckle on your body, this is a great easy way to add this. Now these shades, they do not carry a lot of pigment. They have a sheer base, but the base is pigmented enough to justify having all three of these shades in the palette. But I don't know if you can see, but my chest has a really pretty sparkle. I'll try to put some footage over so that you can see better. But if you like the sparkles, this is great as a body product. Now as a highlight, I'm gonna move in a little bit closer here for you. It might be a little bit harder to see on camera, but I think the only shade that's actually gonna work on my face as a highlight is going to be the fussy shade. Again, I'm using a synthetic brush. This is a Kaleidos H1 brush, and you'll see it really is just adding sparkle to my face, not necessarily color. If you don't like any sparkles in your highlight, this is definitely not the way to use it. You can also use it as a highlight topper. So if you put down maybe like a smooth or a traditional highlight and then you put this over top, this adds a great little sparkle. So that's what that looks like on the skin. Again, not my cup of tea. It just wasn't a product that I found myself reaching for a lot. But this pink highlight is very very pretty it looks nice and sparkly on my body and then the last way that i would probably use this most is on the eyelids as a lid topper so yesterday i mixed these two shades i put this shade all over my lid and i put this shade on the outer half of my lid i did have some eyeshadow underneath but i used these as lid toppers and it added instant sparkle to my eye look and honestly you guys Loved the way that these looked on my eyes. That's my favorite way to apply these. I'm not so into the whole sparkles on my face for a highlight. There definitely is a time and a place for this. So if I went to like a concert or something, I would definitely use this on my cheeks and my chest and my eyes. So this formula isn't one of my most used. It's not one of my favorites, but I do think it's a versatile little palette if you're into sparkles like these. It's quite mess free. They last a long time. The the sparkles didn't fall out from my eyes. So the formula itself is good. It's just a matter if you feel like you are going to use this. Most likely for me, no, it would be something that I would pass on $42. I mean, that's a lot for this. <laughs> I mean, so for me, I'm gonna say it's not worth it. If this is a product that you feel like you would use, the product itself is nice and it does what it's supposed to do. Let's get into the juicy stuff. This is what I know you guys wanted to see. This is the eyeshadow palette. This is called the Bomb Posse Mega Mix and Match Eyeshadow Palette. It has a clear cover, doesn't have that mirrored effect and you have a mirror and of course you are going to reveal 12 shades now these shades are organized in those three colors that I told you about so this quad right here is going to be the fussy quad this quads the Fenty glow and then this quad is the hot chocolate each eyeshadow itself does have the names they are going to be written on the back I do like that the names aren't really in the front you know I don't think they need to be it's not necessary so this palette's made in the USA it has a 12 month shelf Life. and you're getting mixtures of mattes, shimmers, and metallics as they put on the website. This palette's going to be $48. I sound really nasally right now. I don't know. I went through a sneeze fit before I started filming and it's just sitting there. <laughs> Like I was fine up until this point. So it looks like in here you're getting six mattes and then the rest of the six shades are going to be a mixture between the shimmer and metallic formula. I think it's a really great ratio. And my honest thoughts when I first saw this palette revealed, I thought it was absolutely beautiful and it was the first Fenty eyeshadow palette to have caught my eye. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I never tried the snap shadows from Fenty. I was not interested. Uh, so this was the first palette that actually caught my eye that I thought had a pretty color story. Very clearly, it's a neutral color story. Everybody probably already has these shades if you have a collection of makeup, but it's just the fact that it was a Fenty formulation that I wasn't familiar with. And I mean, you get the cool snap design if that's something that you're into. So that makes it easy to travel with. You happen to bring both of these with you. Yeah, so I was really excited about this. This was definitely the first color story that I was into. Now, you guys have pretty much told me that this is bad. I've gotten messages from you guys telling me I heard it was really bad. I've seen photos of thumbnails that looked like this was bad. I really wasn't going into this video with the highest of hopes. You know, $48 is a lot for an eyeshadow palette and I haven't used it yet. Like I said before, this is my first impressions. All I've done thus far is swatch it. And from what I can say from swatches is the palette does seem to be a little inconsistent in the form 
formulations. I need to see how they apply. Some shades I felt like were buttery, smooth, pigmented, and creamy. And then there were other shades that felt hard. They didn't feel creamy at all. They had a patchy swatch. Some shades weren't pigmented. They weren't showing up as well. So I need to see these on the eyelid. But based on my swatches so far, I'm definitely wary, not very impressed. I'm going to quickly throw on my Viseart eye primer. I'm gonna do one eye first, and then we'll see if I want to repeat that look on the other side or if I feel like I need to play with more shades. So I'm gonna start off with Vanilla Cake right here. Just using a blending brush, and I'm just placing this color right underneath the brow to set. I mean, this is a cream shade, so <laughs> I can't really say too much about it. It's not powdery, and it's doing the job that. I need it to do. It honestly might be like a quarter shade deeper than my skin tone, but it's setting the base down. I don't have a problem with it. Now I did notice with these front shades right here, I didn't get a lot of pigment with these. So I'm gonna put it on this eye. We'll see. So I'm gonna start off with this rose shade. It's called Rock and Rose. It's kind of a cooler color. That's pretty. It has the pigmentation that I need from it. It's a gorgeous color. Blended beautifully not too powdery, didn't make a mess. So, so far that's nice. Let's build a little bit of depth. I'm going in with this shade right here. And honestly, the swatches, the matte shades aren't the ones that I'm really worried about. The matte shades felt really nice when I swatched them. They swatched very creamy. I'm mixing both of those shades and running them along my lower lash line. It's the shimmer shades that I really want to do the experimentations with. I'm going to switch over to Wayne Goss number six brush and we're going to play with this shade. This is the very first shade that I swatched and this swatched really good. I was like, ooh, this is one of those creamy pigmented shades. So we're going to run this through the crease using the tip of my brush. Smoke this lower lash line. You can see very pigmented and it's blending so easily. From these three matte shades that I've used, this palette seems very nice thus far. Let me get a little bit closer for you guys. So the mattes in this palette definitely are not gonna be an issue. Okay, this shade left me a little bit worried. Let's see. It's okay. It's a little bit on the sheer side. It doesn't appear to have too much of a base, but it adds something to the lid, a little bit of a subtle sparkle. So if I were to put this all over the lid, it'd look natural and pretty, but it's not a wow shade. It doesn't feel especially creamy. It's not pulling very pigmented, but it's like a soft sparkly pink shade. You can see this all over the lid looking pretty, right? Let me take a brush. I'm gonna use my Sonia G Builder brush and we're gonna go into this shade. Again, this is another one of the shades that I didn't think swatched very well. This is kind of bleh to me, unfortunately. It almost looks very similar to that first shade that I apply. Like putting these two shades in were redundant. This shade definitely needs to have more of a pigmented base because it's not really covering my eyelid. And I think it's fine to have lid topper shades in a palette, but you need to give me some shimmers that aren't see-through that can create a base on my eyelid and fill it up. Because these lid toppers are just fine to put all over the lid on top of shadows. Or if you're going for that see-through kind of look, it's fine but you need a pigmented metallic in the palette as well and considering that these four are supposed to create one look the both of them pretty much look the same one is just less sparkly than the others so these two definitely did not need to be in the palette together like it's not bad the look is pretty but I'm not wowed you know now these shimmers also I was skeptical about so let's build on this side right here I'm gonna use some of the mattes that I haven't yet used. So this shade right here, it's a little bit warmer, but it's not adding much depth to my skin. Not that it looks like it's going to. Just wanted to let you know what it looks like on my eyelid. And then let's use this shade. I haven't used this one yet to build. So I like that you can get this warm variation right here. So you can get a pinky look right here and then you can get a warm look on this other side of the palette. I mean, these mattes are super good, you guys. Really pigmented, very, very easy to use. This shade, I did not like the way it swatched. Let me show you. I mean, yeah. Proof is in the pudding. Let me show you this one. Like, I'm rubbing pretty hard. This one's a little bit better, but the shimmers in here are not good, you guys. You see that? The shimmers in here are not good, you guys. 
they're just not. Taking the tip of my builder brush from Sonia G, running this along the lower lash line. In this way, the shadow worked really good. Really kind of packed on. Oh no, look. The shadow is having trouble sticking to my eyelid and it's getting on my skin. It looks a little bit patchy. I'm sure if I applied it with my finger, it would look better, right? Yeah, but as a shade that's that dark, it should not look that patchy even if I use it with a brush. Now I have a mess down here. Let's use this shade next. Put this on the center of my lid. I'm just gonna go in straight with my finger because these shades don't carry much pigment. They don't have a base really, so we need the finger to really pack on that pigment. And this shade's pretty. It has a little bit of coverage there. It looks really pretty on the eyelid. You do need to build it up. You do need to press hard. That's not bad. This is probably the best shimmer that I've used thus far. This one I know is not about to have a base. Let's see. And you can see I'm really digging in here, guys. Ooh, that one's pretty. This one definitely applies better than a swatches. Do you see that? That's super pretty. I like this shade. And it gives a lot of dimension to the eye. But again, you really have to dig in this shade, which is something that you shouldn't have to do for a $50 palette. I'm just being honest. And then this is the last one. I'm just gonna put this in the inner half of the eyelid. <sighs> I mean, look. What can we do with that, you know? <laughs> so here's my thoughts on this palette based on the two looks that I've done. The mattes, really great, very easy to use, pigmented, blendable. The shimmers here definitely need some work. You can get pretty looks with this palette, absolutely. And the shimmers, they don't look bad on the eyelid, but you can tell they're just not good quality shimmers. You have to build them up, you have to press hard into the pan, you have to, have to, have to use your fingers. Just for a $50 palette for a high-end palette, based on other competitors around the price point, not good quality shimmers. Um, I want to move on to the next product. We have the Flyliner Long Wear Liquid Eyeliner. I haven't tried her liquid liner before. I have tried the pencil liners and I really, really like those. So this is the shade Big Truffle. It is $22. I do realize I have all of this fallout. Maybe I should do something about that. This eye was kind of a mess. <laughs> I don't know. This is the packaging. It's really nice silver packaging. It says Fenty Beauty and this is made in Korea. It has a six month shelf life. Now as far as the tip, I know that's what you guys care about. It is a felt tip. Looks like this and I am telling you now, I really, really like this eyeliner, you guys. You saw how pigmented that is. It gives off so much coverage. And I thought I was a fan of brush tips, but I really love this felt tip. I like how long it is and how thin it is. It really makes it easy to apply. This is switching me over to a felt tip liner, girl. I love, love, love the tip on this. I used this yesterday, I'm telling you now, love this. I think it's so good. It's pigmented enough. It's not too liquidy. That's a big pet peeve about liquid liners that I have. When they're too liquidy, they swim in the fine lines on your eyelids. Does not happen with this. So easy to apply and lasts a long time. This particular color, it's almost like a warm brown. It pulls quite warm on the eyelid, so keep that in mind. But I love that not only just black eyeliner is trending now, people are starting to see how great a brown liner is. It's softer, let me just show you. Now I will say this color, as you can see, it's a bit warm, especially against the neutral tones underneath. It's really showing the true color of this. I would like to see more of a neutral brown in this line eventually, but do you see how easy and quick that was to apply? I literally did that while talking. It covers right over the eyeshadow with no problem. Problem. Oh, I love this. This is gonna look really good with the pink side of the palette. I really hope this liner doesn't dry out too quickly because I have nothing bad to say about this. Wear time is great. Just the quality of this is so nice. And I definitely don't have a color like this in my collection. A liquid liner that's such a warm brown. It's really pretty. I'm taking a look online. They do have this in black as well. Definitely would love to see them expand the color range here because this formula is so good, you guys, and the application of it. I really, really love this. I'm going to pop on some lashes and we'll finish with the lips. 
I'm back. I just popped on some of the Sephora Collection Size Up Mascara, which if you watched my Sephora Collection video where I covered this, I like this mascara a lot more. It did a pretty good job with my lashes. But anyways, we're going to move on to the final product that I have to cover today, which are the Gloss Bum Heat Universal Lip Luminizer and Plumper. So if you are into the Fenty Lip Gloss formula, you're going to really like these. However, these are all repeat shades. These are basically Based off the original shades, we have Fussy, Fenty Glow, and Hot Chocolate, but all of these have the word heat at the end because they are a lip plumper. They're going to feel a little bit spicy when you put these on. Now as far as the shades themselves, they are identical to the already existing shades. These aren't like the OG lip gloss formula because there aren't any shimmers in these. These are more like their cream formulation that they came out with earlier in the year. There's absolutely no shimmers, no glitters in here and I really like that formulation. I'm going to show you Fussy Heat. They also have Hot Cherry which I do not own and I've heard that color is awesome but let me show you if you've never seen these colors before I mean literally they don't have too much pigment to them they just add a nice sheerness to the lips so I would say these have the same pigmentation as the original lip gloss formula but they have the same finish as the cream formula so less pigment than the creams but it has no shimmer like the cream formula if that makes sense but here is fussy heat and it's not too spicy or hot on the lips, but it is a lip plumper. It feels like a lip plumper. It's going to plump your lips. I really believe that this is a very plumping lip gloss. First of all, because of the shine that these have. Before the heat line, they plump the lips because of how shiny they are. But add the extra heat. I really do feel like it did plump my lips, but it's not too uncomfortable. Now, if you're not a fan of any type of lip plumping formula, you're not going to like these. They have that plumping scent to them, if you know what I'm talking about. But it's not the most painful lip plumper that I've ever felt. It's not like the Too Faced lip injection. I quite like it, honestly. I, I like that spicy feeling on my lips. That's fussy. Let me show you Fenty Glow. Oh, OG color. You can see this has more neutralness to it. Almost a little bit more brown. I love this shade. Between these two, you definitely only need one of these. They look relatively the same. It just depends kind of what colors you wear. If you tend to have brighter makeup, more pinky makeup, go with Fussy. If you tend to wear more neutral makeup, brown makeup, then definitely go with Fenty Glow. Mmm, I'm feeling the spiciness on my lips. I really like these. Okay, and then let me just show you hot chocolate really quickly. I've never tried this color before on my lips, so. Ugh, this with a nude brown lip liner will be amazing. Oh, I love that shade. So I don't think these are a need, but honestly, I prefer these over the regular Fenty lip colors. Like, I feel like because I like the plumping effect, I like the plumping feeling, when I run out of my other Fenty lip glosses, I'm only gonna purchase the heat version because I like lip plumper. So you know your likes and dislikes, and if this sounds like it would be for you, it has the same Fenty consistency, color, pigmentation, feel, all of that to the original formula. It just has that added element of of the heat but I really really like it. Alright you guys final thoughts on the holiday collection. We'll start off with the highlight palette. I mean for me this is a necessity but it's not bad quality at all if you like this formulation or if you like sparkles on the body, glitter toppers kind of like that. I think you would like this but $42 is expensive so it's not my favorite product in the world. Probably would not have bought it for myself for personal use but if you know you like the formula then i think you will really like this the eyeshadow palette i can't recommend this for 48 dollars the shimmers really need some work when i used a brush to apply the shimmers you guys it was really messy on my eyelid when i went to apply mascara off camera i started to see up close all of the fallout that happened from trying to use these shades with a brush and they just don't have the pigment in here if you like a softer shimmer you like that little bit of glimmer lid toppery kind of looks and maybe the shimmer formula is for you but just based on the formulations that i like not for me the mattes are really good but for 48 dollars I think you can get a much better palette at this price point. The thing that I probably recommend the most out of this whole video is this dang liquid liner. <laughs> it is so good, you guys. I love it. I love the color. I love the applicator. I love the wear on this. Nothing bad to say about this. If you don't have a brown liquid liner in your collection, treat yourself. This one's really nice. And then the Fenty Heat lip glosses, they aren't something that you absolutely need to go run out and buy, especially if you have a lot of the other 
their Fenty lip glosses. But if you're looking for a plumping lip gloss, I really recommend these. I think they are really nice. Great colors to begin with. Just nice, easy to wear nude colors that can mix well with so many other colors. So I definitely like these a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you to those of you who are subscribed to my channel already. And make sure you guys like this video before you head out. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.